Hello, welcome to Dungeon Daughters Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Justin. Today we're reviewing uh, the Super Robot anime movie, Bodios, the movie, uh, which also goes by Space Warriors Bodios. Um, this is a Blu ray released by Discotech. Uh, it comes with two versions one is the original Japanese version. Which is two hours long, and the English version, which is which is uh, 99 uh, minutes. Which this is basically a compilation movie, which which a lot back in the day, Japan would release like you know a full length TV series, and then they would cut edit it down to like you know usually it's. They would do like three movies, right? They would edit the series into three movies, right? And release them as compilation movies. Like, Gun, uh, the Gundam series uh, do that uh, do that kind of stuff a lot. Uh, here, they only they they only compiled everything into one movie, and that's wh what I'm reviewing. So, um, uh, people who worked on this, uh, the chief director was Haisa Yuki Toriyumi, screenplay Aki. Yoshi Sakai, who was the original design, um, sorry, original creator of the show. Um, you got uh, original story, yeah, by the same guy. Characters designed by Asamu Kamijo, art director Tarao Arai, animation director Teyu Ishida, mechanical design Hajime Kamigaki, and the cast, the Japanese cast. Is Akio Konoshima as Dr. Quenstein, uh, Daijiro Tsutsumi uh, uh, as Raska, Haida Kat Katsu Shibita as Fuhrer Gatler, Hayayuki Tanaka as Jack Oliver. In the, sh in the movie I watched, they just call him Oliver. Uh, Kanato Sh Shizuzawa as Marin, who's the main character. Uh, Tatsunosuke Hori as Commissioner Tsuka. Kagi, who's like you know every anime um, robot anime has like the or sorry super robot anime has the character who's like the scientist guy who's like the creator of the mecha that's that's the character uh, Kasuhiko Inoue as David and the movie they call him Div, uh, Divit, uh, Dewitt which is spelled D-E-W-I-T-T I-T-T -T in the sub but like it, it clearly sounds like the Japanese voice actors are calling him David, but with an accent. So I don't know. I think the somebody in the subtitle is fucked up. Uh, you got Keiko Han as Jemmy Hushino, who's like you find out in the movie she's like a princess. Keiko Toda as Afro uh, Afro uh, Daya, and uh, that's and Asato Yamaguchi as Doctor Reagan. And uh, which is the main character's name is Marin Reagan, <laughs> and yeah, you even have this other character um, sh uh, who's played by voice acted by Shigeru Chiba as Miron, who is like who our main character killed him. <laughs> which it's like kind of confusing because like they got like the na the names are so similar. Um, you can uh, j you can just. Replace the I with the A and with both it names. So it's like, what the fuck were they thinking? But yeah. So the story for this uh, movie is basically uh, on the planet S1, there is a violent uh, takeover by the military, uh, who's like the military's commander is uh, Gatler, who's named himself the Fuhrer. <laughs> yeah, they they pulled a gun. There's a lot of Gundam. Uh, references here. When did this anime come out? I think it was 81. Uh, originally, I think I saw somewhere it was 81. Let me double check. I should have went to my anime list, but it went by a different name. So, yeah, originally this mo uh, this uh, TV show came out in 1980. So, like, like a year after Gundam, because Gundam was like 79, and it had like 30. One episodes aired for and out, out of 34, so it was like, huh? So it got canceled. They didn't. Wow, it was canceled before they 
they put out all the episodes. Holy shit. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's it's it was given like a 6.5 out of 10. So the the the, the story is um, yeah, you have this planet S1, it gets taken over um, by the military. They kill the the president of or the leader of the planet. And uh, they go to kill the scientists who have been working on uh, a project to clean the po the pollution of the planet S1, which you know the the planet is highly polluted, right? They killed they kill the scientist. The head scientist just finished his device to clean the contamination on S1. And they kill him, right? Uh, and uh, he, he turns out to be the 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 father of our main character, Miran. Miran sees this, uh, kills the guy who kills his dad, and that turns out to be the brother of this of this uh, girl, female commander. Aphrodia, who you know was kind of like, um, a, not they never said they were boyfriend and girlfriend, but like he was like she was the um, romantic interest of our main character. They met at like a lighthouse, so he escapes onto like a spacecraft, leaves the planet. Um, Gatler takes a hundred thousand sorry a hundred million citizens of s1 and leaves the planet to go to space to look for a new planet our main character flies through like um some kind of time warp and gets transported to the past on and lands on earth uh which is attacked by uh, mysterious invaders which turn out to be from from gatler's forces right and how they attack earth is actually pretty cool they attack the earth and then before they the earth um can counter strike they go back into hy hyperspace that's where they have their command ship right so and like you know the earth uh doesn't have like hyperspace technology until uh they uh they use um this organization called Blue Fixer, which is a really stupid name, uh, takes uh, Miran's spacecraft and combines it with their like three sh three um, ships that they have to form this giant robot called uh, Baldios. Which uh, I assumed the Baldios was gonna look really ugly because they don't have it on the on the cover of the Blu-ray. And you only see like the zoomed out image of it on the back, and that's very small. You can barely take a good, you can't take a good look at it. You finally see the Baldios, and it looks like, no joke, it looks like, face wise, it looks like a Gundam. <laughs> they totally ripped off Gundam. They made, well, they made they made the Super Robot, which like has a kind of cool color scheme. It's like black and red, with and some gray. But like on its face, it totally looks like a Gundam, with but they just put like a samurai crest over on top of the Vivan. So it has the Vivan fin, like Gundams do, but on top of it, it has like a samurai crest. <laughs> and they they don't do that thing that a lot of super uh, robot anime uh, do, where like you know the every time the robot uh, attack does a different attack, they you know the main character yells like a special attack name they they do that once for the sword and that's about it um so mo most of the 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 movie is just a drama between like you know uh our main character miron who's like kind of conflicted uh because you know he um well he's not actually conflicted but everybody questions his motives right because you know um he's everybody considers him an alien even though he's a human obviously and he has like a very english sounding name they treat him like a like uh alien and uh but like he he is com committed to saving earth from gatler's forces because you know uh he doesn't want earth to become contaminated like s1 uh and like you know there's like there's subplots in the movie where like characters like he um, gets betrayed. He goes over to the bad guy's side. He comes right back. 
um, you have this drama where, like, you know, he, um, the f female commander has feelings for him and vice versa. Uh, Gatler, who's, like, the main bad guy who's, like, called the Fuhrer, he's actually a very, like, um, I would say sympathetic character because he's just doing what he thinks is right. He's just trying to save his people, right? So uh, he just wants to conquer the earth um, to save his people because he can't go back. They can't go back to S1 because the, that planet is polluted as hell. And he's just trying to ensure the survival of his people, right? Uh, what turn? What ends up happening? Because the movie has like environmental <laughs> message like uh there's a point where they start to lose the war you have these soldiers uh these uh, officers on the bad guy side like we have like four of their like nuclear uh depots under our control why don't we just nuke the planet and just uh nuke our enemy in this win right he's like no we can't do that right because we don't want it to turn into s1 <laughs> So you have like a red herring there, <laughs> a very big red herring there. Um, they do this attack where they flood, they uh, flood the planet by melting the ice caps or whatever in the North and South Pole. And one of the places that they destroy is Australia, which is very fucking <laughs> reminiscent of the colony drop, the colony drop from uh, um, from Gundam and. Like I don't want, I don't mean to spoil the whole movie, but like yeah, it turns out that even though they tell us the main and right in the beginning of the movie that the main character traveled back in time, it's not till like the finale of the movie, right, where they where our main characters and the bad guys realize, oh shit, Earth is actually S one from the past, so they've been fighting uh their their descendants uh sorry ancestors this entire time <laughs> so it's kind of it, it turns into ten <laughs> it turns into christopher nolan's tenant <laughs> because christopher nolan's tenant for people who didn't watch that movie it's basically uh, the main characters like the um, main the story for that movie is like we're at war with the future here it's like the, it turns that's what this movie turns into but it's like how did they not know it, it it's just a weird like plot twist because we knew that they were from the past that they've traveled back in time but i guess uh the, even though the narrator told us that i guess it turns out they didn't know that <laughs> so you have this like kind of retarded plot twist that we knew about but they didn't right well i i guess like you know what it what it well we didn't know that you know s1 was earth so that was kind of a plot twist because we just ass i just assumed you know it was like a c colony planet right um i should mention if you're there's not a lot of i would say there's a lot of action but there's not a lot of mecha action like baldios you only see like in uh in the movie like twice like um, like I would say like 20 minutes in the movie and then like for the final battle, right? Um, yeah, so like if So uh, if you're a fan of the the mecha you might be better off watching the show But I don't know if you can like if there's anywhere you can watch it because like discotech only has the movie right and they only aired the first 31 episodes they didn't air the aired the last three episodes of the 30 because it's like a 34 episode series like so you might have a hard time finding uh this uh this tv series <clears throat> so if i were to give this movie a rating i it's the thing where it doesn't have a lot of mecha action but you know plot wise story wise the you know it's pretty good and though like the, the, it hits you over the head with the environmental message at the end to the point where there's like in the credits there's like a message from the the creators talking about we need to ch we need to like uh, save our planet and shit like that <laughs> so if yeah if i were to give this movie a rating i would say it's a 6.5 out of 10 i really enjoyed it but the problem is th this is a discotheque um release and disc discotheque can be really expensive 
So like I don't know if it if you can get this, get this for cheap then I would recommend it but like it's not worth paying like you know like 40 or 50 bucks which Disco Tech releases can go that high. All right that's all I got to say uh later guys peace